Hello and welcome to a portion ministries family and friends uh, prayer call or YouTube or video. Um, today is actually Wednesday, March the 7th. I'll probably upload this for tomorrow, March the 8th, which just so happens to be my little lady's birthday. So I'm sending a shout out. Happy birthday to my mom from Houston, Texas, all the way over there to California. I wish I could make it closer so I could spend the evening with you and just happy birthday you, but I'm not. So um, I'm going to do two things with this exhortation today. Sunday when I was at church, I heard a, a communion message and Holy Spirit told me that's your word to share with the prayer line, prayer with, share with your family. You know that we are in communion with Christ and then monthly, usually on first Sunday, most churches do it, but it says as often as you do it, um, we partake of communion. So I have some communion elements here, uh, actually an acacia wood communion cup with some grape juice and some matzo bread. And so we are going to partake of communion. But let me just share that word that Holy Spirit gave me as I was sitting at church on Sunday about communion. Oh, this is another praise report that I have. One of the other delays in me getting on the call. Yes, I'm in a new job and it's more time demanding and taxing on my time. But also I have been working on finishing a portion volume four, Kingdom Ready, Thy Kingdom Come. And let's get the drum roll. The book is done and so now I have it um, being formatted to go to print and working on the cover, getting the acknowledgments written by the two people that are doing the acknowledgments for me. And so that book is titled Kingdom Ready, Thy Kingdom Come. There is a portion in the book where I talk about kingdom manna. And, you know, I didn't know Holy Spirit gave it to me as something to write about. I didn't know where I was going with it. And so it's a really nice section in the book. But this Sunday, when I was preparing for communion at church, Holy Spirit began to talk to me. And we are to know that Jesus is the bread of heaven. He is the manna from heaven. You can see this in more detail in John chapter 6. If you were to open your Bible to John chapter 6, you will see that Jesus is the um, bread of heaven, that he's the manna. Um, there's a conversation going on here in, in John chapter 6. Um, where Jesus is the bread of life. So when we come and we partake of communion, it was a type and shadow. It was a symbol of Jesus coming and, and, and having the blood of Jesus, the blood that was shed in order for us to have the bread. And so in John chapter six on your own, I empower you to go, especially with the anointing of what God is releasing in our hearing today, you can see John chapter six, verse 22, all the way through the end is 71 verses and it talks about and, and I'm gonna be honest with you this is one of those scriptures when I first read it as a, 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 a new believer this scripture kind of got on my nerves because he's basically this it's in the hot sauce Jesus is speaking and he's saying that in order for you to be believers you got to drink my what did it say at, at verse 53 verily verily I say unto you except you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood you have no life in you. And so that just kind of grossed me out. I'm like, I ain't no cannibal. That's nasty. Um, so, but you have to have Holy Spirit as your teacher to go forward and to open the scripture up for you to see that it's talking about something that takes place in the spiritual realm, but we have natural symbols of what's taking place in the spiritual realm. And so you are to eat the bread of heaven. There's a song that says, bread of heaven, feed me till I want no more. You are to eat the bread of heaven. You are to be sustained on supernatural food. Back in Exodus, when the children of Israel were in the wilderness and God fed them with with manna. Manna means what is it? That's what it means. What is it? They had never seen it before, but it was God's way of providing for them. God can supernaturally provide for you in a wilderness place and situation where you're being delivered out of bondage into the promised land and God takes care of you along the way. That's the manna and it, it was white. This is actually a pizza piece of matzo bread where it's white and it has stripes and scores on it. Um, and so Jesus is the 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 type and shadow, the symbol, the fulfillment of this bread of heaven that we see here in uh, John 6. And so, um, hmm. I just encourage you to go see Jesus as the bread of heaven. Another thing that I wanted us to see in Revelation 2.17, this is, we're going to partake of communion. I know I'm the only one taking it, but you know what? If you're watching this YouTube, go in your house, get you a piece of cracker, a piece of bread, some juice, some water if you don't have juice. 
Um, and we're going to symbolically partake of the body and blood of the Lord Jesus Christ in just a moment. So if you want to grab that, we'll be doing that in about four minutes. Revelation 2, verse 17. In Revelation chapter 2, okay, God, I got a lot going on. In volume two, Christians on assignment talking about obedience. In the chapter two about how do you know your assignment, um, I say one way that you can be prepared for your assignment is to prepare yourself each month with communion. Um, and and what it, in, in 2 Corinthians chapter 11 where it talks about the communion, it says don't partake of the communion table unworthily or in an unworthy manner. And what it means is you are to examine your heart. So here in Revelations chapter two and chapter three, Revelation, it's the revelation of Jesus Christ, of the church, of the body of Christ. But here in, in Revelation chapter 2, um, it talks about this manna from heaven. And so, but the self-examination that you can do with yourself each month, if you have my volume 2 book, you can turn to it where I have a brief summary of what's going on here in Revelation chapter 2 and chapter 3, the seven letters to seven churches. We are to examine ourselves each month and make sure that what they got in trouble for, we use, we, we tap in the Holy Spirit and get rid of that in our lives. And what they were commended for, we continue to do that in our lives. But here in Revelation chapter 2 verse 17, this was the church of Pergamus, actually, Pergamus is being talked to from verse 12 through 17. And Pergamus, it starts out with, with um, the Spirit of the Lord saying, I know you, I know your works, I know you're doing good. Um, but uh, the, it, what did it say? The seat of Satan, Satan's seat is among you. And, and, and there's people that have learned. I, let me just read what I wrote. I said the church of Pergamus is actually the church of compromise. God is telling us that we cannot compromise the truths that he's sown into our lives. Um, we are to deaden the power of the doctrine of Balaam so that we can be obedient unto the Lord. And so the doctrine of Balaam, this was there in, in Revelation 2. If you read it for yourself, he says, I know that there are those among you that you tolerate that they are serving the doctrine of Balaam. And what the doctrine of Balaam was, it's in the Old Testament when um, the man Balak wanted to curse the children of Israel. So he went to Balaam, who Balaam was a prophet that's supposed to work for God. But um, Balaam had greed in the root of his heart. He saw the money that Balak kept offering him, and he every time he tried to curse the people of God, you know, the enemy can try and curse you as much as he wants, but when God is blessed, he can't curse. And so when Balaam would try and pronounce a curse upon the children of Israel, what would come out of his mouth was a blessing. And so the doctrine of Balaam is, uh, instead... Balaam taught the enemies of God how to get the people of God to um, curse themselves. Because, see, he couldn't curse them. How do you curse yourselves? By getting out of alignment with God, by doing abominable and detestable things in God's presence. That's, that's a whole other story. I don't want to go there. And so here in Revelation 2, I'm going to read verse 16 and 17. It said, and I'm going to read it out of the Amplified. It says, Repent then. Or else I will come to you quickly and fight against them with the sword of my mouth. Verse 17. He who is able to hear, let him listen to and heed what the Spirit says to the assemblies, the churches, to him who overcomes, who conquers. I will give to eat of the manna that is hidden. And I will give him a white stone with a new name engraved on the stone, which no one knows or understands except he who receives it. And so the point of the matter is when we turn from, when we repent, when we no longer give in to the idolatrous ways that was talked about here, when we no longer give in to the teachings of the Nicolaitans and the doctrine of Balaam, then when we repent, repent means to change your mind, abhor your previous thoughts and, and not to give in to that. When we repent... Then comes in this manna from heaven. And so I'm going to go ahead and we're going to partake of communion. It's in 2 Corinthians chapter 11. Oh, you know what? Is it second or first? You know, and I'm doing this on camera, flipping through my pages. But hey, um, yes, 1 Corinthians, I'm sorry. 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 17 through 34. And it's basically, this is where the institution of the Lord's Supper in the New Testament, this was by Jesus, and he's speaking. And he says at verse 24, Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And after the same manner also, he took the cup when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. 
you keep reading on for yourself, it goes on and talks about not taking of it unworthily. That's here in 1 Corinthians chapter 11. So I'm going to break the bread. I'm just going to eat a little piece because I don't know if y'all ever had matzo, but it don't, it don't, it don't break down well. Um, so eat the bread that was broken for us. And we lift up the blood of the cup of the blood of Jesus Christ. We always say there's power in the blood. We always say, I plead the blood of Jesus. I apply the blood of Jesus to my door post. So when we do communion each month, we're putting ourselves in remembrance to what the blood of Jesus and the broken body of Jesus have caused us to have access to. We now have access to the kingdom of heaven. We're restored back to the way Adam and Eve were in the garden. you got to get the book when it comes out in about a month so that it'll make more sense to you with what the blood of Jesus did for us. And so, God, we thank you for your shed blood that was shed on Calvary for each and every one of us on this day called today that we're alive in the land of the living. And we did drink. Well, I just want to thank God for what he's done. There's another thing that I wanted to say as I go into prayer about the bread and the oil the oil mama you recognize this this was actually the wedding favors at our wedding back in november 2015 and we said sharing the overflow blessings the gift of frankincense and myrrh so this is anointed oil and so we're sharing the oil of joy the oil of gladness fresh oil um, he anoints my head with oil uh, holy anointing oil many were sick and cured and then there's a wise preparation where the uh, ten virgins, five were wise and five were foolish. And when you're wise, you have you some oil always with you. And so we're going to go into prayer where I'm going to take this oil. And as it said in Psalm 23, 5, he anointed my head with oil. So as I anoint my head, I'm anointing your head and I'm dispatching the oil of God. Even with in Ruth, um, with Ruth and, and Boaz in Ruth chapter 2, verse 14, they ate bread with oil. And so that, that's what Holy Spirit was showing me when I grabbed that oil. I'm like, why am I grabbing this oil? He said it's part of the exhortation. And so when we have the bread of Jesus Christ, the oil, which oil is symbolic of Holy Spirit. If you study it out for yourself, oil is symbolic of Holy Spirit, of the anointing that is smeared upon you. And so God, we thank you for this word of communion today. We thank you for this word of letting us see, know, and understand who the bread of heaven is, who the manna of heaven is. And we thank you that we will be a people that press into your presence and get to know you even the more. We thank you for the shed blood of Jesus Christ that is here, that is helping us. God, we come right now praying for everyone that needs healing. I pray for my mother, even as I have anointed my hands with oil. I anoint you on your shoulder in that area which is bothering you, which is causing you to have pain. And I dispatch the word of God according to Psalm 107.20. He sent his word and healed the sick. God, I thank you for the blood of Jesus that brings forth the healing power and virtue that is needed. That you, oh God, are bigger than any name that can be named. You're bigger than cancer. You're bigger than arthritis. You're bigger than lupus. You're bigger than any unnamed disease. Thank you for every bruise, wound, stripe of the Lord Jesus Christ that he received to cause the breaking of the bread and the shedding of the blood that we now have to have access to the kingdom. And like I said, it's types and shadows. Thank you, God, for the types and shadows of bulls and bullocks in the Old Testament and the Old Testament ritual law, but now we live in kingdom law and kingdom principles, and we thank you that the blood was shed once and for all through the Lord Jesus Christ, and we just come appropriating it in the spirit realm. We come right now harmonizing our lives, our bodies with the heavenly realm, God, harmonizing ourselves where there is nothing missing and nothing broken, harmonizing ourselves where there is no lack, no poverty, no turning of day, no want in the heavenly realm. And so when we say, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven, even God in the Lord's prayer in Matthew 6, and in Luke 11, we say, give us this day our daily bread. And so we could do communion every single day if we wanted to, putting ourselves in remembrance and tapping into the fact that you are our daily bread. You are our word. You are our substance. It's in you we live and move and have our being as found in Acts 17, verse 28. And so we thank you, God, for what you've given us. We thank you for the privilege of prayer. We thank you for 
the family, the household of faith and the brethren, the equipping of the fivefold ministry gifts as we come together time after time on this prayer line. Thank you, God, for coming in and moving like never before. God, I pray for those that are seeking employment. I know several people that are seeking gainful employment. Either they have a something, something, but they're looking for a steady. And I thank you, God, for you making ways out of no way because you favor us. We thank you for your favor, O oh God. The favor of you, O oh God, is better with you than with man. But I thank you that you've called us over the years to increase with you, O oh God, and man in favor, wisdom, and um virtue according to Luke chapter 2 verse 42 and verse 50 that we are increasing in favor that we are increasing in the realms of where you have us to be and we give you glory and honor. I even thank you for those that are in tumultuous situations and relationships whether it is in a relationship like this whether it's a family relationship or whether it's a co-worker relationship where there is uh, tumultuous situations the Bible says wherever there is strife envy jealousy be sure the flesh is there and so we come right now God giving you access to crucify the flesh we turn on the fire of God and we thank you for your fire that burns up the sacrifice of flesh God and it burns up everything that's not of you and not for you and so we thank you for what you're doing in this time and in this season I pray over those that are single right now that uh, as the Bible says married and unmarried and I pray that in this season of singleness of being unmarried that they deal with whatever baggage and issues they must deal with to be prepared to be married and we thank you, God. We're praying for marriages right now. We thank you that you are reigning in the midst of marriages. Jesus at the center of it all. Some people may have gotten married and didn't know exactly what they were getting into. But we come right now decreeing and declaring strong kingdom marriages for you. Ephesians 5 type marriages where the men are being the head in the household. The husband and the wife are submitted one unto another. The children are being raised in the fear and the admonition of the Lord. The parents are not provoking the children to anger, but are raising them and training them in the way they should go so that when they grow old they shall not be depart and we're not moved by what we see if it looks like they've departed we just leave your word give your word access and entrance that all of our children shall be taught of the Lord and great shall be their peace we thank you that deliverance is the children's bread we thank you that the seed of the righteous shall be delivered and so we come praying for those that are believing for breakthrough in the lives of their children and their children's children we just give you glory honor and praise God be God, be who you are, be who you've promised to be in our lives. I take this moment to just kind of pause and bask in your presence as I feel that I've tapped into realms of who you are and what you want to say and what you want to do. So in this last minute on this prayer call, God, I thank you for meeting, speaking to the hearts of your people. Speak to the hearts of your people answer questions that they've had long before and they've never known who to ask but right now in this place of in your presence we can ask whatever we will and you oh God will bring forth answers like never before I close this prayer call out with a Proverbs 3 type anointing God that we can lean and trust in you with uh, trust in you and you will lead us guide us and direct us that we lean on, this is Proverbs 3 verse 5, lean on, trust in, and be confident in the Lord with all our heart and mind, and do not rely on our own insight or understanding. In all our ways we know, recognize, and acknowledge Him, and He will direct and make straight and plain our path. Be not wise in your own eyes, reverently fear and worship the Lord, and turn entirely away from evil. It shall be health to your nerves and sinews and marrow and moistening to your bones. God, thank you that as we rely on you, as you're leading and guiding us and directing us, our health is springing forth mightily, God. And so I thank you. I lift up Malia as she's praying and believing you, oh God, for divine healing in her dirt suit and her body, but also to be able to lose weight. And so those of us that are believing you for losing weight, as we follow your instructions as to how to properly fuel and feed these dirt suits, forgive us forgive us oh lord for letting our house get a little running out of order yeah i'm talking about me if you're 50 you okay forgive us god 
and then empower us with wisdom and insight. Even this Proverbs 3, empower us to lay aside the weight and the sin that does so easily beset us as in Hebrews 12, 1, God. There are things, eating, gluttony. God, deliver us from gluttony. Deliver us from overindulgence and overeating and give us wisdom as to how to eat properly, physically as well as spiritually. We thank you for all that you're doing. I ask a special blessing upon my mother on this year, God. I stand on Psalm 68 for her life and I thank you that you make yourself real you make yourself manifest to her like never before that you get all the glory all the honor all the praise in Jesus name spirit lead me where my trust is without borders let me walk upon the waters wherever you will 